So, starting here with the antenna assemblies, we have four examples typically used in several ESN systems. From the right side, we have a sinus cavity antenna, typically wideband from 2 up to 18 gigs, dual circular polarization and low medium gain. This is used for interferometers and radar warnings applications, which belongs to ESM due to compass size, RF phase excitability, and wide beam coverage. For example, with four antennas, we could easily cover 360 degrees of any, any platform. Next one, a beautiful <laughs> horn antenna, in this case from 1 to 18 gigs, single linear polarization. If two polarizations are needed, we could use a SLAN 45 polarizer, which is basically a PCB with several copper strips. Uh, so please consider Googling it. If you need more information, you can Google it like this, Horn Antenna SLAN 45 polarizer, and you will find plenty of uh, papers and documentation, pictures, and so on. Horn antennas, in the contrast to sinus, can be used as transmitter, as countermeasurement, ECM, and moreover, as well as a receiving element, ESM. Uh, they are quite robust for outdoor installation and simply to handle. Electrical advantages here. High gain, typically constant beam with over frequency, which is super interesting for amplitude comparison direction finding techniques okay we which will depict we will uh, depict this technique later on amplitude comparison um, so now let's talk about this wired by cone antenna as you may know these are also super wideband could be from 0 0.5 to 18 or even 40 gigs Linear, single polarization, and low gain. Here we could also implement a SLAM 45 polarizer, as mentioned before, in order to get vertical, horizontal, and SLAM 45 polarization. Pretty much being able to detect all type of polarization, incoming polarization. Just a quick remark, a SLAM minus 45 will be impossible to detect. Okay, so remember, um, with a polarizer, 45 polarizer, we can detect vertical, horizontal, and of course, SLAM 45. But, of course, we cannot detect minus 45. They are completely perpendicular and we won't be able to detect nothing. Um, the application is typically combining it with direction antenna like horns or reflectors, then the omnidirection pattern could be used as side load level suppressions, avoiding false target detection. Okay. Omnis are also assemblies in circular arrays up to from five up to nine element typically for phase based direction finding. I will show you later on some pictures about these arrays. And finally, one of my favorite, a multi-beam Vivaldi antenna. As you can imagine here, we feed each Vivaldi with RF input. Therefore, we create several beams to cover the 360 degrees around the platform or around the assembly. And later on, we perform a direction finding based on amplitude comparison, also called monopulse technique. As mentioned here, two examples of omni and directive antenna integration. So on the left side, we have five, nine, we have nine directive horns covering 360 degrees and one Vicon omni on top, as you can clearly see. On the right side, a more complex one. Here we have from top to bottom two omnis under aratum, aratum one for higher and one for lower frequency 
as expected. Then we have a spinning antenna with two main reflectors, one again for higher and another one for lower frequency. Remember, the higher we go in frequency, the smaller is the antenna. Okay. And um, on the bottom, we have the controlling of the spinning. Okay. A rotary joint with some motor shaft and so on.